It's an honor to have a couple of our students receiving communion for the first time to be sharing God's word with us. And it's an honor to have families here, all families who are having a student who will be celebrating communion for the first time. But especially it's an honor to be in God's presence today. So would you pray with me? Lord, the honor is all ours. And we're excited that you have come to meet with us, but really it's that you have invited us to meet with you. So feed us now through your word. Draw us toward you that we would clearly see the love for us that you have expressed for us, especially that love that you've shown us in your son Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. You never know if this is a good start to a conversation, but this was just a few weeks ago, this last month, that a member of our congregation came up to me right out there in the lobby, and he said, Pastor BK, I had a dream about you. <laughs> like, all right, was I riding a dragon? Was I your mailman? I mean, you know how dreams are. Like, what is it? And he says to me, here's what it was. We were all here on Sunday, and it was about time for the service to start, and you were preaching, and you didn't show up. <laughs> Actually, his words, his words were more ominous. He said, I believe his exact words were, and you were nowhere to be found. <laughs> and I said to him, I was like, look, you can't steal my bad dreams. You know, those are, those are my dreams. Those are pastor bad dreams. Pastors do a few things. They preach, and they serve communion, and they dream about forgetting that they're going to preach in church. And I'll bet some of you have some dreams like that, too. Does anyone have nightmares about being unreliable? Students, maybe it was that there was a test you didn't know about. You forgot to show up for school. Someone was counting on you, and you didn't show up for people who were expecting you. This is a quote for, the, the, uh, for our baby boomers in the, uh, in the congregation. You know, Woody Allen, comedian, director, actor, one of the famous things that he said, he said, 80% of success is just showing up. And we dread not showing up. And we have nightmares about not showing up and failing people who are counting on us. And today, as we look at this, this uh, account of Maundy Thursday, we just had a couple of those vignettes that were read to us from God's Word, from Mark's Gospel. And we're going to revisit those. As we think about that second one, the one that Nicholas read, think about Peter, James, and John, Jesus' close friends, his close disciples. And couldn't they have learned a thing or two about showing up? I mean, really showing up. Jesus had handpicked them to join with him, to come with him into the garden, gave him a special mission as he agonized about what he knew was coming, his arrest and his trial and his crucifixion. And you know, this is kind of an aside, but it's one of those moments today on Maundy Thursday in the Garden of Gethsemane where we really scratch our heads a little bit about this Jesus. Jesus, that in one man, squeezed into one man, this is the God of the universe who does not need anything. He lacks nothing. He has all that he needs, complete within himself. And then he's also a man who deeply needs his friends. And that in Jesus, God has allowed himself to need to rely on others for support and encouragement. And you hear that in Jesus' voice as he pleads with them. He says, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. He has a need. He's not just putting on a show. And he goes off and prays. And then he comes back to them, and he finds that they've fallen asleep. And then he asks them, he says, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? And you can imagine them as they're kind of getting out of their, uh, you know, getting out of their, 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 their sleepiness busting out of their days. And he says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. A good distinction here about showing up. See, the disciples, Peter, James, and John, they were there, but they didn't show up. Because showing up, truly showing up, is more than just being physically present, isn't it? 
the King family, one thing that we're doing right now is we're watching this documentary. It's on YouTube about the Kansas City Chiefs. Like episode by episode goes through week by week of their last season. And so I've been hearing between that and March Madness, I've been hearing a lot of coach speak. Stuff that coaches say. And one thing that I hear here and there is when coaches say to his, to his players, you better show up. I know Coach Adler, if that's sort of something that you, that you say or maybe that you've heard, you better show up. One of those coach things that they say. But what does that mean? When the coach says you better show up, he's not just saying you better show up in the stadium. When the coach says you better show up, she's not just saying, hey, you better be suited up even though you better be, and you better be in the stadium. But no, when they say you better show up, that means show up with all of who you are, ready to do what needs to be done. That's what Jesus was asking of his friends. And that would have been their bad dream. Jesus asked me to do this, and I dozed off. And then he comes back again. Think of those times that someone has counted on you, and you haven't shown up. And this is just one of the realest things that I think that we hear and what we've, uh, we, what we've uh, heard read. Mark records it this way. It says, they did not know what to answer him. They didn't know. No excuses. They weren't just unreliable friends. Now they were serially unreliable friends. They were there, but they didn't show up for Jesus. You know, in this past season, one place that you may have shown up is our midweek uh, Lent worship on Wednesday evenings. And if you've been there with us, you may have noticed that we have closed with the exact same hymn every week. My daughter was noticing that, and she was asking me if that was on purpose or if that was an accident. I told her it was on purpose. This hymn was written by a Scottish preacher. His name was Henry Francis Light in the 1800s. And Pastor Light, he wrote this in 1847, this hymn, when he was suffering from tuberculosis. And that tuberculosis would actually take his life later that year, the same year that he wrote this hymn. And it's a hymn that's familiar to many of you. And uh, it's a hymn that I want to share the first verse with you on the screen here. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail, and comforts flee. Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. It's a beautiful hymn. Actually, it might be twice as beautiful as you realize because we sing four verses of what's actually an eight-verse hymn, the original hymn that Henry Francis Light wrote. And one of the verses that we often don't sing really stands out to me. It's a deeply personal verse that he wrote, and I want to share that with you as well. As he wrote, Thou on my head in early youth did smile, and though rebellious and perverse meanwhile, as though I was rebellious, thou hast not left me, though I've oft left thee. Unto the close, Lord, abide with me. What a verse for Maundy Thursday. What a verse for friends who didn't show up when Jesus needed them to watch and pray. What a verse for people who've literally left him when he was arrested, for people who would deny him during his trial. It's a verse for them. It's a verse for Pastor Light. It's a verse for you and me too. Because Maundy Thursday and that gathering in the garden, that's for us too. Today is a day to identify with those friends. You know, that's what our confession of sin does. When we gather together and we pray and we confess our sins, it's an, ex- it's an honest examination for those times that I can say, God, I didn't show up. Not just in a dream that I was afraid of doing, but in reality. And we say, Jesus, I have not shown up by loving you with my whole, whole heart. I have not shown up if you, as you've asked me to love my neighbors as myself. You know, I might be the most conscientious one. Maybe this is you when it comes to a group project deadline. You might be the the one who's the most punctual when it comes to coming to a meeting or showing up for your team. But I say, Lord, I've been the unreliable friend in thought and word and deed. In other words, I've oft left thee. 
when I make promises and I don't keep them, when I have good intentions and I don't follow through with them. That was on display in the garden. So friends, that's a reality of that Thursday. I don't want to leave us there, though. I want to point out a greater reality. And that comes in the first reading that we heard that Haley read, because before they traveled to the garden as a group that evening, Jesus gave his disciples a lesson in showing up. They sat together around a table in this upper room, and they were telling a story. They were telling a story through the meal that they were having together on that Passover. As they were recounting God, who centuries earlier had reached into their lives, who had shown up in Egypt where they were slaves, and had rescued them away from being slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. And they had done this every year. And this year, this happened. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And with those words, Jesus would fulfill the meaning of that meal that commemorated that historical rescue. And with those words, Jesus would connect that miraculous exodus, that miraculous rescue, to this miraculous rescue that was coming the next day when he would die on the cross for us. And with those words, Jesus would connect his living presence with that meal for us. Pop quiz. Woody Allen said, how much percent of success is showing up? 80%? Here we have 100% of Jesus. That in this 100% bread and wine, there is 100% the presence of Jesus. Fifth graders, students, we studied these words from Paul. We looked at a lot of different passages of Scripture. This is one of them. I want all of us, not not just students, but all of us to read these words together. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Paul wrote these words to the Corinthians. And can you see the amazement? Can you pick up the amazement in those words? Paul is saying, what a miracle that Jesus shows up among us. That in this meal, he truly abides with us. He doesn't just pass through. He comes and he stays. So the miracle of communion is not just that Jesus is here in some mysterious way that only God can do, although he is. The miracle is not just that Jesus is here in this, at this altar when we receive communion, although he is. The miracle is not just that Jesus is really present when you come forward and you receive that wafer of bread and that cup of wine and you eat it and you drink it, although he is there. But the miracle and the wonder is that Jesus shows up in the most complete sense of the word, and you receive 100% of Jesus' forgiveness, and 100% of Jesus' faithfulness, and it's 100% for you, because here at this table, and here in these aisles, Jesus shows up with all of who he is, ready to do what needs to be done. And that's when your spirit is willing and your flesh is weak. Jesus shows up. Those times that you haven't shown up and like the disciples, you don't know what to answer him. And Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up for you. And he doesn't show up here because you believe that he's here. He shows up because he promises that he's here and he calls you to believe it and to trust him that he is here students, first communicants, for your forgiveness and for your comfort and for your consolation and to know that you belong to him, that he has not left us, though we've oft left him, 
Jesus has shown up. He abides with us. What an abiding Savior that we have. Let's reflect on that now as we prepare to meet him where he promises that he shows up. darkest deep end. Lord with me abide when other helpers fail and comfortly help of the helpless abide with me thou on my head in early youth did smile And though rebellious And perverse meanwhile Thou hast not left me Though I oft left thee Unto the clothes, Lord, by I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace? And for the tempter's power, who like thyself, my guide and save can be? Through cloud and sun. Shine by me, and I fear no foe. With thee at hand to bless, hills have no way. Tears lose a bitterness. Where is thy sting? Where great thy I triumph still by me. Hold out thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the sky. Thy morning break. Earthly shadows in life and death, Lord, abide with.